In this presentation, I'll share with you what is involved in running the Dovetail MicroC assay in the lab. The MicroC assay can be completed in two days, and that is going from sample to a sequencing ready library. It consists of five stages and a total of 18 steps. So day one is for cross-linking, digestion, and proximity ligation reactions. It includes stage one, two, and three. At the end of stage three, you would have generated proximity ligated DNA. This DNA is then converted into a sequencing library in day two, and that would be stage four and five, which take four and a half hours to complete. There are several safe stops throughout the protocol for convenience, and there are also QC steps built into the workflow. Now, this is an overview of the workflow. Uh, in the next slides, I will walk you through the workflow stage by stage, and I will highlight the steps. These are very straightforward steps. Uh, they can be achieved using standard molecular biology techniques. So in stage one, the chromatin is fixed in the nucleus, then digested with MNAs, Following digestion, the cells are lysed with SDS to extract the chromatin fragments. We use DSG and formaldehyde for cross-linking in a two-step uh, cross-linking strategy. So DSG has a longer spacer arm. So it's a strong protein-to-protein -protein cross-linker, and it allows to capture uh, large protein complexes. So when you use DSG in conjunction with formaldehyde, we're increasing the long-range information captured in the library. I'd like to address a question of how we're rotating the cells during cross-linking. We just use a standard tube rotator with continuous rotation. An example is shown here. The ductal micro -C assay does not require sonication for library preparation. It's only relying on the enzymatic fragmentation or the digestion with MNAs. So achieving a good digestion profile is important to generate a high quality library. So high complexity and high um, enrichment of long range information. To achieve optimal digestion, we recommend to freeze the cells before cross-linking. Also the number of cells you're starting the assay with will influence the amount of MNAs used to achieve optimal digestion. In order to help with uh, more accurate counting and to reduce cell clumping, we recommend that you harvest the cells at low speed spins and you use a swinging bucket rotor when harvesting the cells. We also recommend to count the cells before freezing. So you would harvest the cells, wash them with PBS, count, aliquot the number of cells you'll be starting the assay with, spin down to remove the supernatant, and then freeze the cells uh, by just placing the pellet at minus 80 for at least 30 minutes before cross-linking and digestion. The standard protocol calls for 1 million cells, but if this number of cells is not available uh, to you, we, we also provide digestion guidelines for lower input down to 10,000 cells. In this stage, this is a QC step that is included early on in the protocol to allow you to confirm that the chromatin is properly digested before moving forward. It will also allow you to quantify the total lysate or the chromatin yield that you're recovering from your cell sample. So how do you do that? How do you confirm that the chromatin is properly digested? It's by following these simple steps. You will first take an aliquot of the total lysate that you recovered after cell lysis at the end of stage one. The remaining lysate will be stored back at minus 80. This is the lysate that you will use to proceed further. This aliquot is essentially cross-linked chromatin. So the first thing we'll do is reverse the crosslinks, degrade the proteins with proteinase K, purify the DNA, and then we will run the DNA on an analysis instrument. You can use tape station, bioanalyzer, or fragment analyzer to assess a digestion profile. So looking at this uh, digestion profile, this is analyzed by a tape station. The first peak here represents mononucleosomes. Here are the dinucleosomes, this is a trinucleosomes. The profile we're after has 40 to 70% mononucleosomes. So how do you determine the percentage of mononucleosomes in the digestion profile? You'll create a region that includes that first peak, which represents the mononucleosomes. And a tape station, usually this peak is between 50 and 250 base pair. 
When you create this region, a region table will automatically be generated under the electropherogram, and it will output the percentage of total, meaning how much of your DNA is within this region, 50 to 250 base pair. This is the percentage of mononucleosome. So in this case, um, the profile shows a 52.22% mononucleosomes and it passes QC. This is another digestion profile analyzed uh, on a fragment analyzer. Again, this is the mononucleosome. Here are the dinucleosomes and here are the trinucleosomes. Based on the smear analysis, the mononucleosomes account for 48.4% of total. So this is also a digestion profile that passes QC. If you have a suboptimal digestion, we provide guidelines to allow you to adjust. So in the case that the chromatin is underdigested, and in this case, the mononucleosomes will be less than 40%, or if the chromatin is overdigested, so in this case, the mononucleosomes are more than 70%. Now that you've confirmed that the chromatin is properly digested and you've quantified the amount of lysate that you recovered, you can proceed to stage three. So you'll start stage three with a thousand nanogram of the lysate that you had stored at minus 80. If you have more than a thousand nanogram, you can store the lysate, the remaining lysate back at minus 80. If you have less, you will use all of the lysate that you have recovered. The first step in stage three is to bind the chromatin fragment to chromatin capture beads. So the proximity ligation reactions will be carried out on the beads. Then you will repair the ends of the chromatin fragments. A custom uh, biotin tagged adapter or bridge will be ligated to the repaired ends of the chromatin fragments. And then fragments that are co-localized in the 3D space are ligated to each other through that bridge to generate the proximity ligated chimeric DNA molecules. Following ligation, the crosslinks are reversed, the, the proteins are degraded, and the DNA is purified. This is a simple purification with bead cleanup. When starting the assay with 1,000 nanogram, we expect to recover around 400 nanogram at the end of stage three. You'll only use 150 nanogram of this DNA for library preparation, so the final two stages. That means you will have a more DNA to support additional library generation. This comes in handy if you would like to prepare technical replicates to include in the project, or if your project calls for higher depth, so you would need to generate more libraries. In that case, you can generate the libraries from this DNA, and you don't have to run the assay from the start. The intra-aggregate ligation reaction and the crosslink reversal reaction are incubated for one hour but you can leave these reactions incubated overnight for convenience. All of these reactions are also incubated in a thermal mixer, so with shaking. Here's an example of the thermal mixer we use in-house. It's a standard mixer which has heating and cooling function. There is really no specialized equipment that you need in order to run the micro C assay in the lab. The final two stages, stage four and five, now you're converting the DNA that you purified at the end of stage three into sequenceable molecules. So these steps are just standard NGS library preparation steps. You repair the ends, add an adapter, and then purify the adapter ligated DNA. As I mentioned before you start the library preparation, there is no sonication step. So now that you have purified the adapter ligated DNA, you can proceed to the final stage. Before the PCR amplification, we include a step of streptavidin bead pull down. So we're going to be pulling down and enriching specifically for the biotin related proximity ligated DNA molecules. When these molecules are, or the template DNA is bound to the beads, we're going to set up the PCR amplification on the beads. And after amplification, we will clean the library and size select. Then run this library on a fragment analyzer, bioanalyzer, and a tape station to check that the range is as expected. So we expect the library to be between 350 base pair to 1,000 base pair. This library now is ready for paired end sequencing on any Illumina sequencing platform. I wanted to add that the protocol as written is specific for Dovetail library prep module and primer sets. These two modules are offered as add-on modules for a more streamlined workflow. 
If you have a preference of a third party library preparation kit that you routinely use in the lab, please reach out to us. We will let you know if it's compatible with the assay and how you can integrate it in the workflow. Before deep sequencing, what we recommend is to shallow sequence the library. So we shallow sequence the library between one to two million read pairs, and then we run a QC analysis to assess the quality of the library prior to deep sequencing. 